after a week of this process, I'm be the more I think about it, the more I think that uh, what the Supreme Court has become, what the nominating process has become, bears absolutely no relationship to what the framers had in mind when uh, all of this was set up. I feel like we've just completely lost the constitutional roots of how this whole thing ought to work. Is, is that true, you think? Is there any truth to that? I think it's true at virtually every level. I think, you know, if you even contemplate what advice and consent meant to the to the framers, they didn't think it meant, you know, obstruct and shout. They really thought that there would be close ties between uh, the Senate and the president, that, you know, this would be a conversation, not, you know, a hostage situation. But even beyond that, you know, I think it's worth realizing that when the framers contemplated life tenure for a Supreme Court justice, what they were really thinking about was people who live to be 55, 60. Right, you know, they were not right, envisioning 30, 40 year terms with nobody ever leaving. And so I think it's just at so many, so many levels, this has broken down in part because the framers just couldn't have imagined both, you know, the, the party system, the polarization, but also I think just a, a, a court this intrinsic in the national, you know, polity. I mean, I think they did not envision a court that in one term was going to look at abortion and affirmative action and one person, one vote and public funding for unions. You know, that wasn't the court they dreamed of. Yeah, uh, it, that's certainly the way it seems. A a and uh, the whole notion of balance of powers, of balance of power becomes uh, quaint or, or obsolete if the whole point of uh, nominating or obstructing a nomination for a Supreme Court justice is to preserve the power of your ideology for the next several decades. No, I think that's exactly right. But, you know, imagine, track back and imagine the framers, what they would have thought of the Supreme Court deciding the 2000 election, right? I mean, I right. think in so many ways we are so... I don't know. I guess the psychologist would call it enmeshed or codependent. You know, like, there is such... Uh, blurring between the branches. And I really do think that, you know, the folks who say, well, this is going to sort itself out through the elections process, if nothing else, you know, the Constitution can't help us now, uh, but will the election will decide this. But of course, the election was absolutely not supposed to decide the composition of the U.S. Supreme Court. That was the point. Well, and uh, my understanding of the process is that the last election decides who appoints a, a judge who uh, a, a replacement judge when someone dies during this term. I, I thought that was the whole structure. We well, had an election. 